特斯拉创办人、科技先驱马斯克曾经在二零一五年预言，二零三五年人类将和 AI 无缝合作，成为一个更完善、真正的赛博格。所谓赛博格，就好比将来我们若有必要换个生化角，这只新的机械脚不但听懂主人大脑发出指令，还能及时快速运算，让生化角的反应能力跟另一只脚一样快。这么一来，人人都可以因此依照需求自由跟动部分的器官，成为赛博格。马斯克认为，这并不是因为电路密度增加的缘故，而是届时电脑运算成本大幅降低。不管是运算速度或储存空间，都达到想要多少就有多少的状态。这中间量子运算就扮演极其重要的关键角色。但时至今日，我们理解到的量子运算仍如同双面刃，一方面加速 AI 技术推进，却又因为具备快速破解网络加密系统的能力，不止因此危及国安，更可能破坏电商交易。现在，中国跟美国一样，同样是量子运算为涉及国安的国家级技术，已经宣布砸四十亿美元设立实验室，紧追最近几年由美国频频抢先登记专利的局面。川普政府追随前朝做法，今年初也通过国家量子推动法案，扶持美国业界的量子计算研究，总金额高达十二亿美元。上周，谷歌研究十三年，宣称达到的量子霸权相关概念，其实最早是由加州理工学院物理学教授 John p r e s c o 在二零一二年提出的。如今，技术有了新的里程碑，将来电脑运算将是以量子运算速度推进。马斯克所言，人机恍若一体的赛博格，只怕很快就要出现了。Now with Google knows beta, the roses. Are just a click away. If you have a question like, "What does a new car smell like?" Who knows the answer? Google knows. What does a ghost smell like? Google knows. 坐在电脑前用力闻，号称透过搜寻引擎，居然能搜寻气味。众人一脸严肃地在镜头前甜滑乱坠。这是谷歌在二零一三年推出的愚人节广告，当年天马行空的创意发想，如今却渴望成真。谷歌发表一项研究指出，他们试图训练人工智慧 AI， 透过分析分子的化学结构就能预测气味。They used a type of neural network, but it's called a graphical neural network. 一个原子之差，玫瑰花香就可能变调成臭鸡蛋味。用化学结构辨识气味分子难度很高。谷歌旗下的 AI 团队 Brain Team 采用人工智慧图神经网络，是种能处理图表结构的机器学习演算法，因此可分辨分子结构中不同原子的距离关系，辨识不同气味。让 AI 学习分辨气味，乍看只是酷炫噱头。谷歌展现出有能力处理这样复杂的分析运算，才是真正关键。超强运算能力可是谷歌的秘密武器。谷歌十年磨一剑，宣称在量子运算上创下划时代的新突破，风光登上美国自然期刊封面。Google claims it has reached a key milestone. Using a quantum computer to complete a task that a classical computer couldn't manage, achieving what they call quantum supremacy. For many years, practical quantum computing was only theoretically possible. Google's team has proven it can work. This is the hello world moment for quantum computing that many of us have been waiting for. 谷歌 CEO 皮彩喜滋滋地将这项技术突破昭告天下。皮彩形容，这就像当年莱特兄弟发明的飞机，首航只飞了十二分钟，但它证明了飞机能飞上天。量子电脑的起步，象征着电脑科学向前迈进一大步。The big news today is that Google researchers have achieved an incredible breakthrough in quantum computing. They have demonstrated. With the quantum computer, that it can perform a computation in seconds, what would take the world's fastest supercomputer years, thousands of years, to do that same calculation? And in the field, this is known as quantum supremacy, and it's a really important milestone. 
，有别于传统电脑以位元为基本单位，量子电脑采用量子位元，可让运算速度呈现飞速成长。量子电脑只花了两百秒，也就是三分二十秒的时间，就能完成一台超级电脑花上一万年的运算。超级悬殊的对比，让谷歌宣称已经达成量子霸权。不过，在量子运算领域耕耘已久的 IBM 却打脸谷歌，认为谷歌夸大其词。IBM has released a paper claiming that the Summit supercomputer could actually complete the task in just two and a half days. Are using a slightly different technique. Scientists will now scrutinise both camps' calculations. But even if IBM is right, it's still significant that Sycamore was so much faster than the supercomputer. 无论哪一方的数据比较准确，量子电脑的计算能力都把超级电脑远远甩在后头。强大的运算能力替各种科学研发开启了一扇大门。We're not just talking about random, you know, math experiments like the one they did today. We're talking about the development of new medicines, of new materials, of、uh, artificial intelligence, all of which depends right now on this very limited language of computing. That we use. So the idea here is that if they really begin to go forward from this, and this is just a first step, but if they begin to really be able to deploy quantum computing in the way that they imagine, suddenly we're going to be able to have all kinds of incredible breakthroughs in the materials we make and the artificial intelligence we build and everything else as we go forward. The applications that we currently envision, which could have a really big potential impact. Are improved ways of using computers to simulate chemistry and materials that might help us find new catalysts that could do things like fix nitrogen more efficiently, or new pharmaceuticals, or new ways of capturing solar power. 美国加州理工学院教授普瑞斯基尔，这是二零一二年首度提出量子霸权概念的学者。他肯定谷歌的研究对量子电脑应用高度乐观，但也有人提到量子运算恐怕引发国安危机。The passwords that you and I use and that we use for all encryption is based on the idea that it would just take far too long, like let's say 10,000 years, for a regular computer to overwhelm your password to figure it all out. Well, it's a national security issue because with quantum computing, in theory, you could very quickly Guess and break down a password or any other encryption scheme. I mean, really, just like that. 既然这项尖端高科技牵涉到国家安全问题，美中两大强权自然又免不了狭路相逢，正面交锋。Incredible breakthrough is a, national, a matter of national security. The Trump administration has said it's going to commit、uh, about a billion and a half to, to quantum computing. Meanwhile, China is throwing billions, hundreds of billions of dollars at this kind of project. 美中政府各自砸下重金，暗地里练兵。两国的科技大厂也争相在量子运算抢占一席之地。阿里巴巴在二零一七年就宣布，三年内投资一千亿人民币，推动量子运算和金融科技的技术发展。美国数家科技巨头也不落人后。And the other big players in the United States are Microsoft, IBM, other companies like this. It's really a mark of our age that this kind of, you know, Kitty Hawk sort of breakthrough is not taking place at the government level or care of academia. In this case, Google, in fact, bought the lab, absorbed a lab from UCSB, University of California, Santa Barbara, and all its researchers, and still maintains a Santa Barbara presence, which is where this computer is. 尖端技术掌握在企业手中，却也令政府忧心忡忡，就怕肥水落入外人田，被其他国家占了便宜。China. It's a structural problem. It's not a tariff problem, and we cannot look. We cannot have them steal three hundred billion dollars every IP every year. We can't have them turn over our technology, particularly the technologies of the future, the AI, the blockchain technology, the robotics. 白宫鹰派人士一直担忧中国的科技野心对美国国安构成威胁。《纽约时报》报道，美国商务部旗下的工业安全局打算加码限制三大技术出口中国，包括 AI 演算法、三 D 列印以及量子运算，将科技竞逐直接拉伸到国家层面的大对决。就是因为量子计算技术优化，马斯克也曾经说过，他在二零一六年成立的神经科技公司 Neuralink 已经拿猴子做过实验，发现他已经可以用脑下指令操作电脑。据说这家公司在各界争议声中，已经研究出非常好的脑机界面。
，人与 AI 共生的未来已是必然。不过，不同于马斯克公司锁定创造病患福祉，一般正常人有没有必要在体内植入微晶片呢？这种接受管理者的掌控这个话题，我们带你了解。This is a microchipping party. And a floor of this. 在手中植入微晶片，让这位瑞典女孩兴奋不已。在瑞典，体内植入微晶片早已见怪不怪，已有超过四千人都自愿这么做。Jag tycker att det är jättebra med att man har blivit på chip. Jag älskar alla företag som numera gör så. 扫描手中晶片，完成验票。瑞典国营铁路公司 SJ 已经接受乘客用晶片搭车，成为全球第一家使用植入式微晶片当做车票的铁路公司。Behandling är en väldigt ny teknik som kommer mer och mer, och vi vill tillsammans med våra kunder testa sån här ny teknik och se vad vi kan göra mer. 这种人机一体的风潮还吹到了英美，手一挥就能解开门禁，再一挥还能结账付款。And we've developed a human implantable microchip. It uses similar technology to credit cards, passports,、uh, card entry systems buildings, and we've just shrunk it down and put it into a microchip. 英国创业家诺瑟姆是全英国第一位在自己手中植入晶片的人。无论是进出家门，甚至发动汽车，自己的手就是钥匙，简直将行动装置发挥到极限。Heals within a couple of months, you get a very small scar left, and it's really made life a lot easier as I wander around buildings, get into the house, start the car, and so forth. 亲身体验到微晶片的方便，诺瑟姆一手创办的 Biotech 公司也在英国向个人和企业。推广，号称在手部虎口植入一枚米粒大小的晶片，过程不用一分钟，痛感和穿耳洞差不多。在 Biotech 大力推广下，英国至少有一百五十人植入了晶片。愿意植入晶片的科技控越来越多，但这也引发庞大争议。There's a whole, let's say, wave of people who believe they've been chipped by the government against their will. They're asking if we can remove it, scan the bodies because it's controlling them, downloading thoughts, all sorts of stuff. And there's a religious argument around the mark of the beast, I'm the devil, etc., etc. So yeah, there's interesting groups out there who really don't like this concept. 植入晶片的概念让政府监控人民的阴谋论甚嚣尘上，就怕这将让人每天的行踪无所遁形。So I've been compared to Hitler、um, before for microchipping people.、Um, it's been commented, but I mean, I can't really see the connection personally.、Um, I can understand people have very strong views. There's big ethical arguments around microchipping people, but currently it's by choice. No one is enforcing you have to be microchipped. 当所有个人身份、地址、门锁密码，甚至是病例等，全都藏在这一粒晶片中。只要附近有有心人士，趁人不注意时拿着读取机，所有的私人资讯就会全数曝光。Unfortunately, these innovators often don't think about the political ramifications. In today's world, particularly, we have to imagine how. Governments and how ambitious politicians and even ambitious corporate、uh, corporate executives will try to imagine putting this type of technology into you so that they can exploit your data and ultimately exploit you. Already, governments are keen to capture your fingerprints. They are keen to capture your iris scans, and they want to be able to do this at a distance so they can identify you as you walk through areas. They're doing facial recognition. These are all fallible technology. 许多人担心植入晶片后，一举一动都被记录下来，形同遭到监视，毫无隐私可言，还让老板有更多权力控制员工。So if my employer wanted to microchip me as if I was their puppy, I would have a huge problem with it, and I would probably quit. You could argue that. The government is tracking you everywhere you go, but they are already with your phones. Yeah, it just seems a bit permanent. If you already have an Apple Watch that you're wearing around, at least you can take that off at some point. Not something I would do. I think it's a great idea, and I think it would make it all a lot easier. I just think that you have to back it up with maybe some doctors saying it's good for your health. It also seems to be one thing if. Retailers can track me on my phone to see if they can get me to buy some socks or underwear. It's a different thing if my employer can see where I am, see what I'm doing when I'm off the job. 
this is serious stuff. We're talking about a nonstop potential connection to my body. I can't turn it off. I can't put it away. It's in me. That's a that's a big problem. 就连瑞典晶片公司创办人都认为，晶片确实有潜在隐私风险，要大众普遍接受会是一个长期学习的过程。Very easy to hack a chip implant. So my advice is, don't put your life secrets on a chip implant. It's about educating the people. And giving every person the tools, not only how to use the technology, but more importantly, when it's being used against you. 拥抱这种新科技的人，总是坚信晶片具有更多可能性，像是在紧急情况下能派上用场的医疗资讯。The idea of this chip is that it's not transmitting anything. It has to be actively read. You choose who can read it and when they can read it. I think that that gives us a lot. More personal control over our information than your mobile phone is giving away. 任何科技都是把双面刃，便利之余，没管控好都可能演变成灾难。生物晶片进入人体，相关的配套措施完全没办法大意。